it's just a house. Okay, this episode is mostly going to be just going around and doing side quests because there's quite a few of those in this town. You're here. Good. I have everything I need to get started. Just one thing before we do. You're the Cloud, right? Cloud the Merc. I'm told you did a wonderful job helping the people of Sector 5. <laughs> you have a very impressive work ethic. It's like they say, good things come to those who work. What goes around comes around, and in ways that might surprise you. <laughs> I'm gonna put Aerith in the most gorgeous dress you've ever seen. <laughs> It'll be a real jaw-dropper. All right, now that that's out of the way, once you change, you won't be able to leave town. Are you sure you're ready? All right then, let's get started. Beauty takes a lot of work and preparation. Far more than you'd know. In the meantime, let me see, let me think. You look like you haven't experienced the best of what this town has to offer. That really won't do. Not interested. <laughs> then maybe you can show the town what you have to offer instead. Which is to say, why don't you try putting those finely honed mercenary skills of yours to good use here in Wall Market? I have a few little requests that you might be able to help out with. <laughs> I gave that hand extra special treatment. Now get out there and show me what you can do with it. <laughs> and that's enough of that. Aerith, come with me. Oh boy, I can't wait to see the dress. The dress is part of it, sure. But we'll also need to do something about that plain Jane makeup and hairdo. This is gonna take some work. Ouch! Well, I'll see you later, Cloud peek and I'll poke out your eyes. I'm not really sure which side quests are actually side quests and which ones are necessary for you to advance the story. I'm pretty sure I don't actually have to do any of the things that I'm going to be doing in this episode. I could just turn around and then go back in to uh, Madam M's shop and continue the story. But the way this game always seems to be working out is you advance into an area, then you have a number of side quests. And of course they are optional, but if you don't do them, then you run into a little bit of a problem in that part of the game gets kind of locked away from you if you don't choose to do the side quests. So like in Sector 7, you had all the side quests in that area, kill this monster, find these cats, all that kind of crap. And if you didn't do it, you don't end up getting the conversation with Tifa where she chooses what dress she's going to wear. Now, Cloud never actually went out on that date with Tifa, but we did see her in the back of the Chocobo carriage heading into Wall Market wearing a dress. I guess if I had chosen a different dress, then she'd be wearing a different one there. Although I do want to point out, though, that the dress she was wearing was different than the one that I had chosen back when we had that scene, because, as I had mentioned way earlier, I had made a bit of a mistake and lost my save. So, I had recorded footage up through Sector 7, and then I had to restart the game because I lost my save and re-recorded, or I didn't re-record the early episodes, I just used my original footage, but I made a different choice when I was in that conversation. So I think I chose Exotic before, and then I chose Mature, my second playthrough, and that's the girl she's wearing now. Cloud, been waiting for you to show up. Thanks for coming, and welcome to our humble training hall. Jules, head trainer. If you've got some time to spare, how about a little bit of fun? Wanna try taking on one of our guys? <laughs> You're not serious, are you? Look at him! He's a scrawny little thing! I can snap him like a twig! Now, now. I wouldn't judge this one by his muscle mass. What do you say, Cloud? If you want to give it a go, just let me know. So, you up for a round? Ha! You're taking me on? You look like a dried up old terpsicle left out in the sun. 
got no idea what you're getting into, little man. All right, enough talk. We'll settle this the tried and true traditional way. A squat off. Now, let's all see what you've got. No way I'm letting you win. This happened in the original game. Although, like everything else in this remake, they're making more out of it than existed in the original game. Now, you went to this gym in the 90s version of Final Fantasy VII because you were challenging them to a squat off because they have a wig that you can borrow. Now, Cloud needed to dress up like a woman again in the Don Corneo's mansion, and well, I guess his spiky hair wasn't just good enough, so he had to go get a wig. And, well, the guys over at the gyms were crossfitters, or... Or, no, not crossfitters, crossdressers. I guess they're... Maybe they are crossfitters, considering all the squats that they're doing. Ah, uh, the way they're portraying it here is a little different. You have Jules, who wasn't a named character in the original, but I guess was there. It seems a little bit more of just, like... And a feminine guy, rather than uh, a dude that ha wears his hair long, and I guess he's got lipstick on or something. But you're not here for the wig, so this is entirely just a side quest. He actually had to do it in the original game. <laughs> Nothing to it. How the hell did I lose to this scrawny little kid who looks like he doesn't even consume his daily recommended amount of protein? Ronnie, you know it's all about quality, not mass. You're too quick to judge people by their build. That and your overtrained ego are the main reasons you lost to our bold challenger here. Thanks for helping me teach my boys a valuable lesson. And sorry for dragging you into it. Cloud? We're all one big family here at this gym, and now you're part of it. If you're ever up for training, our doors are always open to you. Let's work together to maintain healthy minds and bodies. The reason why you go through all of this in this game is because once you get to the end of it and you challenge Jules eventually, you'll get a, uh, what is it? a um, very powerful go, item. All right, then. Bring it on. Championship belt. Or champion belt there. Bringing everything I've got. This is so goofy. Because <laughs> you're sitting there, you're doing squats. I don't know why they'd... Cloud is here after he beat the other one. And now he's now done, doing huh? squats. But for some reason, this idiot keeps falling over. It's all just about timing. Just, you have the thing moving between the symbols on the controller and you press it. As soon as Cloud will uh, reach the end of his animation, you can press the next button. Sometimes you need to go and like rapidly press the button to keep it going. To get the momentum going. But the longer you do this, the faster Cloud completes the animation. And if you end up falling over, like the other guy did, then it sort of, like, breaks your momentum, and then you, uh, slow down again. So you really don't want to fall over. But the fact that he fell over gives us the chance to actually beat him. Because I don't think if he didn't fall over, I'd be able to get through this fast enough to win. It's so, so stupid. <laughs> Speed up. You did it! You really beat me! You gotta be in incredible shape! <laughs> it's unfair that you guys are having all the fun. What do you say? May I have this squat? <laughs> you up for some exercise? I'm pretty sure you only had to do it once in the original game, and you didn't have to do it against the gym owner here. So you would, I don't know, as long as you did everything in order and you waited for Cloud's animation to complete, you would definitely win. And Cloud didn't have this weird falling over animation if you went on a board or he just sort of like scratched his head or something like that. 
So this one is harder. Is that it? I had no idea how strong you really were. You truly are something, aren't you? Listen up, everyone! We can be stronger, better. Let's hit those weights! You got it, Jules! Championship belt is actually a pretty good item. So it's definitely worth going through the, through that, was it, uh, strength and vitality both gets increased? And Cloud just took something out of the toilet. So let's give on. There's a couple more side quests in this area, and I kind of don't want to miss anything. So let's make sure we get through all of this shit. Oh, had to speed things along here. It's kind of a struggle to think of things to say in these side quest episodes. Some can really go on for a while. Oh, so you're the new Merc looking for work in Wall Market. Maybe you can help us sort this out. Some criminals have stolen a shipment of donations found for the Leaf House. The fiends! The culprit is none other than the notorious Angel of the Slums. People worship her as some kind of folk hero, but there's no denying she's the one that done did it. I mean, look at this calling card. The Garden Angle 3? Well, they must have meant to write Guardian Angel. Oh, come on, Garden Angle. Listen to me. I guarantee this is not the work of the Angel. I saw it with my own eyes. Three shady-looking types wandering around, scouting their mark, I bet. Well, if you're so sure, then bring them here. Prove to me this wasn't the work of your beloved Guardian Angel. You heard the man, Merc. I've got to find those thieves to clear the Angel's name, and I need your help to do it. She would never, ever do anything to harm the less fortunate. Find the three I saw and bring them here to me. They ran off toward the old expressway on the other side of Evergreen Park. Okay, I'm seeing a reoccurring element here. This guardian angel of the slums and this Morel character. Now, I don't know if they intended it to be really obvious or if they're just insulting our intelligence, but it's pretty damn obvious that Morel is a damn guardian angel of the slums. So they're just, like, beating us over the head with it. Now, I don't know if it's... <laughs> Look at that, he's taking the sign with him. I don't know if it's more of an insult to us or the characters that they created that aren't able to figure it out. But holy frickin' shit. The fact that this character's entire existence seems to be based around the idea of defending the guardian angel of the slums makes it pretty obvious that that's, the, that's who she is. I get that she doesn't look like what you'd expect to be this legendary Robin Hood-esque thief. But that's probably why her character design looks the way it does. Because it looks different. Uh, it's these guys again. What the hell are you doing coming after us? Shit! My dead! My dead! Shut up! It's too late for that! <laughs> Bring it! We're ready for you this time! Wakey, wakey! Time to shine! <laughs> Check out this brick shit house. We picked him up at the Coliseum. Gonna pay you back double, nah, quadruple for what you've done to us. What's a triple? What are we doing? Uh, shut up! We're kicking Blondie's ass for being an ass! The reoccurring enemies in the original game weren't always coming across to me as credible threats. Like, you had the Turks and guys like that, or Don Corneo who made multiple appearances, or two of them anyway. But, at the very least, they gave you the impression that you needed to take them somewhat seriously. Whereas, these idiots are just comic relief. Now, the fight may not be particularly easy because of this big-ass bastard here, but the characters are so stupid that I can't, I can't take them seriously, and I kind of prefer if they didn't do this. These are the angels of the slums? 
Oh man, you're real stupid! We're the Garden Angels! Get it right! Shut your trap, moron! Huh. You don't honestly think that the beloved Angel of the Slums could be any of these three idiots, do you? Nah, I recognize the masks. These guys are just small-time crooks who've been pestering folks around here for a minute. Should've listened to you earlier. Sorry about this. Well, you should be sorry. I'll consider us square, once you've taught these boys a lesson. Deal. All right, get moving. Hey, watch it! Not so rough, you lummox. Yeah, you lummox, you lummox. So what about the donations? Do you need help taking them to the leaf house? Kind of you to offer, but I can manage on my own. I know these streets like the back of my hand. Better, even. It's the angel of the slums! She took the darn stuff! He's gonna be pissed! Well, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Thanks to you, we can put this mess behind us. I'm grateful. The guardian angel of the slums. Radiant defender of the downtrodden? Huh. I wonder if I'm an accomplice. That's enough of that. Should probably get back to Madame M's. Jeez, even the characters in the game know these guys are idiots. I get that they want to go and add a little bit of comedy into the game, and having some reoccurring characters who are hostile to you that are supposed to be comic relief isn't necessarily a bad idea. I just think they missed a mark with these guys. They're a little over the top with how stupid they are, and it's... Every time I see them, I just... It's like there's a groan building up inside me that I just can't help but release. Why, hey there, champ. Got word from Madam M. She said you had time to kill before Aerith's ready for the big event. So, uh, what do you say to taking on a little extra work while you're waiting around? We've got a hell of a lot of fans clamoring to see their favorite champ go another round or ten. And something tells me they're not going to rest until they see you kick ass again. Now get on down to the Coliseum ASAP! I guess if they wanted to redirect you back to the Coliseum, that's probably the best way to do it. You have the option of going back and then fighting some more fights to win some additional prizes. And eventually when we get other characters, we'll get the chance to go and do this all over again with our other characters. Prizes to be won! Get out there and give them a- This challenger wanted another bite at the champ! One of Sam's favorite machines of mayhem, Cuddy! He's been sharpening his blades and dreaming of payback! Can our champ come out on top again? Fighters, begin! I wonder how many people die in this damn place. Because it seems not only dangerous to the people, the combatants in the ring, but the people up in the stands seem like they'd be getting killed by flying debris and explosions and flamethrowers and shit like that. Seems really dangerous. But then again, this game is a little bit ridiculous. Oh, I died. Huh. I don't remember that happening. But alright. <laughs> Try this again. I was winning that fight too. What the hell happened? Ah, well, I guess like a lot of fights, it it does enter different phases where the enemy's um, attacks and stats and all that may change towards the end. And I maybe I just got overwhelmed by that. Oh, I'm gonna die again. Our champ stands victorious once more! Cloud wins! Cuddy's quest for sweet revenge has ended in bitter defeat!
Very nicely done. <laughs> Here's your cut. You earned it. Wait, you're here? What about Aerith? My people are working on her hair right now. I thought I'd take the opportunity to drop by and watch her match. <laughs> I have to admit, I never get tired of seeing Sam's precious toys take a beating. <sighs> All right. I can tell by your hands you've come a long way. They're the hands of a fighter who has found new purpose. A woman? Or two? I wonder. Just doing what I've always done. <laughs> anyway, Aerith should be finishing up soon. I'll go on ahead to check on her. Whenever you're ready, come back to the parlor. Well, uh, that's it for this episode. We can go and head over and see Aerith's dress now, or head up to Don Corneo's mansion, or something. I could stick around and fight some more, but there's nothing really to do here. So, that's the episode. Thanks for watching.